today what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the right hand and we're going to look at a floating thumb technique. So we're going to really dive into getting that tone out of the right hand and using the floating thumb. <clears throat> so in general, when we, when we consider the floating thumb, we think of it as a way to mute strings, but also to maybe fix some playing technical playing style issues that we have. So if we have, we're running into uh, injuries or if we're running into um, some other physical ailments that may be preventing us from having a good technique, the floating thumb could actually help, that, help us with that. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the mechanics of the floating thumb. So most of us, if we're playing finger style, we're using the, tri the tripod thing that I always refer to when I talk to my students, is we, we bring the thumb out and we do the two fingers and we dig into the pickup and we bridge across. So <clears throat> the bridge method is tried and true. We've used it for a long time. But what happens is for a lot of people, especially myself, and what I discovered was I was running into some tendon issues simply because I was had such a hard arch on my hand. When I started using the, the floating thumb, I learned this from Matt Garrison many years ago in lessons, uh, started playing with a ramp. The ramp prevented me from digging in with my thumb and I was able to take that technique and apply it back to bases without ramps. So what we do is we take the mechanism of the thumb with the fingers and there's a couple different ways to do it. Some folks who teach it kind of use the thumb as a tool to kind of simply slide across the strings and come back. So they're using it as a, as a method to mute. Now my personal technique that I've developed with this is almost like a um, creating, encapsulating a string. And what I mean by that, if I can show you, is so when I come in, I take my thumb and my fingers, and what I'll do is I'm also not doing the deep bend anymore on the, on the wrist because I moved the mechanism out here. But what I'm doing is I'm encapsulating the strings as I move across. So if I could show you my E string, A, D, G. And as I move across, I'm actually moving the entire mechanism back. So let's do, let's do a technique with that. So again, I take my thumbs, my thumb and my fingers, yeah, thumbs. <laughs> so I'm going to bring my thumb over here. My thumb is not sitting on the pickup. It's actually sitting, uh, not wedged, but sitting on top. So my fingers, if I were to grab the string, is what I'm kind of doing. I'm almost pinching the string. I slightly bring my thumb back a little bit so there's a little bit of space. Now by shortening the distance between my fingers and the pickup for those free strokes, well, in, in, in this case it's not a free stroke, what I'm doing in there is a rest stroke because my finger is coming back to my thumb and resting. But in a, in a rest stroke, in this case, what I'm doing is I'm only going back to my thumb which is right behind the string. So I've cut the distance of my pluck. So as I drive through, I'm taking my finger, and you can start with one finger. So we put our fingers around, and you drive through and bring it back to the finger behind. Go to the next string, and we move the whole mechanism up, and you're almost like pinching the A string again, and then push the thumb back a little bit against the E string. So we're technically muting the E string now with the side of our thumb. We do the same thing again, we move up, pinch the string, move the, move the thumb back so it's resting against the A, we pluck the D, do the same thing for the G, good. So now what we're going to do is we come back down and we're going to move it backwards so we slide it back. So it's a motion, it's a whole shoulder wrist elbow motion. My wrist is actually staying pretty straight, my elbow and my shoulder are actually controlling the burn because Honestly, the muscle structure that's controlling your fingers is here. It's not here in your hand. So the more I free that up, the easier it is for me to have longevity in my playing. Also, it's gonna give me stamina on the gig because when I start to pinch off after a while like this, I'm gonna end up having some hand pain. Here, I can actually play, I can play a four or five hour gig if I want to, no problem. This also will eventually free up for us to use the thumb in our in our techniques so we if we want to do like a triplet or or a quadruplet we can easily modulate into that by taking the thumb off the anchor so here what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the e string and we're going to do a one two pattern one being our, our pointer two being our middle and we're going to start again we're going to go one two one two and by doing that 
and my thumb and fingers are coming together at a very close ratio. I go to the A string, I just move the whole mechanism over, and it is, it also is almost like a hop in a way, because I'm, I'm sliding my finger up over the string and coming to the next one as I move through. Whereas some people will just actually just let it float and they'll do a pattern, it's more like this. I'm actually more like this. Now, both are good. Depends on what you're comfortable with. I personally like to keep my thumb here because then I can actually use it to strike a string if I want to. And I can actually really, in, gives me that in, encapsulating technique. So you wanna go through, we start again. Doing one, two. We come back. And back. So again, to break this down, the thumb and the fingers are very close together. We're starting on the E string. You can start anywhere with it, but we're, for this exercise, we're starting on the E string. And we're striking the string and we're keeping the thumb right there. I go to the next one and move the whole mechanism. Whole mechanism, whole mechanism. It makes a big difference as you're playing. It really allows you to have a lot of drive and it gives you a lot of technique. And there's gonna be more that we can do with that when we go in and do different voicings. But the more that we bring the thumb into play, it gives us another tool in the toolbox. So let's start out by using that floating thumb. You can do it the Steve way or doing it the standard floating thumb way. Both are right, both will work. What works for your hand may not work for somebody else's. So you really wanna modify this and make this part of your playing. What works this for you? This has been Steve the Bass Guy with Bass Musician Magazine. I wanna thank you for hanging out. And if you enjoyed this lesson, stay, stay tuned because new more lessons are coming. And if you want to study with me and you have questions, even if you just have questions, I'd love to answer them. My, my email is stevethebassguy at yahoo.com. Shoot, shoot me an email. We'll chat. All right. Thanks again and be well.